In the press recently, we've been seeing uh, spy pictures of the new Land Rover Defender. All very, very exciting. And at first glance, I was a little bit disappointed. And a closer inspection, I'm getting quite optimistic. However, there is a reasonable chance that Land Rover are taking us for fools and that that is not the new Defender at all. I'm Andrew Cynthia White. Join me as I share my passion for building four-wheel drive trucks and then travelling to the remotest parts of the world. Now we wait in anticipation for Land Rover to release their Defender and they could so easily just mess it up. And the way that Land Rover will mess it up, they will do one thing to mess it up. And if they do this, they've messed it. It's the one criteria. If they put in air springs, we're dead. Purely because air springs are, you can't modify, you can't, it's so, you can, but it's so difficult to. The vehicles like uh, Discovery, the LR4, and the new, all the new Land Rovers, they're very, very electronic, and every part of them is electronic. We all have to deal with electronics in the engines to, for emissions. It's inescapable. We don't have to live that with that with suspensions. So I so, 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 so hope Land Rover doesn't put in air springs, because the whole point about touring with a vehicle is that you fall in love with a vehicle. Why? Not just because it's the vehicle, it's because you make it, we make it ours by tinkering and tween and then and we're gonna do this and we're gonna add this and then we're gonna put a little thing like this and it becomes a hobby and it becomes what we do and we love and we're passionate about. And the moment you make it over electronic, you kill that market stone dead. Nobody will buy one for this reason. Nobody. You will sell none. Okay, you will sell a few. Eight. It, you know, if you do that, you're not understanding why people adore Defender. Of any vehicle made on the planet, probably, there are some Jeeps and there are a few others, but there's so few, like the Defender, that screams, love me. Do this and add this and put this down and with make it up deeper and do all these different things and it becomes yours. It's 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 a way of personalizing a vehicle that you can do in your garage on a Saturday afternoon. And then take it on an amazing trip and keep turning around and taking pictures of it because it's yours and you love it. If you cannot do that to the vehicle, if you cannot If you're not allowed to change it, then you're not going to sell many of them. You're just going to sell, because what you're going to do is you're going to sell to the same people that buy maybe Discovery or maybe the, 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 uh, the, 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 the Freelander, uh, or you know, Discovery Sport, I should say, which is replaced the Freelander. You're going to be selling to them. You're not going to get any new client. You're not going to get any new customers. Just those people that would have bought your other vehicle are now not going to buy your other vehicle and you're going to buy your Defender because it's nicer to look at. Not because it's any different. It doesn't give them anything different. It's the old problem with branding, what they call line extensions. The moment you take a, you know, a, a beer, Coors, everybody you know, buy a Coors beer. And it's called Coors and they love the brand Coors and, they, and they're going to have a Coors and then they have Coors Light. Well, the, Half of the people that were buying the cause are now buying the cause light. What have you gained? You haven't gained anything. You're just, you're just making another product. And the same people are buying. So you're losing from the one game from the other. It's a very, very common thing in branding. Car manufacturers, Land Rover, are doing the same. And they're doing it badly because all their cars look the same. So there's no... You know, if you love the brand Land Rover, you're going to go and buy a Land Rover. Surely with something like Defender, you're thinking to yourself, we'd love to get some new customers. We need to do something different to get some new customers. Not just satisfy our old customers, because you're satisfying your old customers, because you're making the Range Rover better every single time you buy it. And you're stealing a few S-Class Mercedes customers, and but it's mostly existing customers. 
I bet you I'm right. Range Rover Sport, same story, same customers. Range Rover Sport is because I can't really afford the, the Range Rover, so I'll get a Range Rover Sport, it's a bit cheaper. It's almost as nice and it almost has the prestige. Okay, it doesn't have the prestige quite, but it's still got a lot of prestige, so it's great. Discovery, uh, a lot of your Discovery owners were buying Discoveries because they wanted a, they wanted a really good performance SUV. Yeah, they've still got one, but it's the same as everything else. It's the same as all of the other SUVs driving around. There's nothing that makes it stand out as, you know, I'm a discerning customer. I drive a Land Rover. I drive a Discovery. Really? I thought it would look like, oh, I thought it was a Kia. No, it's a Land Rover Discovery. Oh, that's nice. So now with Defender. The Defender will be seen as an SUV unless it isn't one. Unless it isn't one. Don't make an SUV. You make six SUVs. Don't make an SUV. We're tired of them. But this is my insight into this. And I base it on my life of four-wheel driving, which started when I was 12 years old and has been my life. It's my life's work. And so I know a little bit about it, I think. Well, I think I do anyway. <clears throat> so you're going to build a vehicle. If you do it right, it will have coil springs. It doesn't necessarily need to have solid axles. It doesn't need to have solid axles. Look at a vehicle that has done incredibly well in many countries. Land Cruiser Prado and Land Cruiser FJ, a direct derivative of the Prado. It's in effect a short wheelbase Prado. So why have these two models been so successful with four-wheel drive enthusiasts? It's not its looks. Come on, it's not its looks. There's nothing pretty or appealing about a Prado, particularly the 150. Why is it doing so well? You haven't mucked about with a suspension and I can change it and I can upgrade it and I can give it a little bit of a lift and I can fiddle and play with it. You have given it a turbo diesel engine which is frugal, which I'm sure you're going to do with a new Defender. So tick that box. The suspension, tick that box. Wheels, don't go above 17 inch. Don't go above 17 inch. The, if you go above 17 inch, you've killed it. Stone dead. You did it with Def D Discovery 4 in that you made the calipers so big. Yes, performance, I agree. Yes, you need all these things. Yes, I agree. I'm, you know, I understand why you did it. But the, but the penalty of doing that is that I can't put on different rims. I don't want rims better than, bigger than 17 inch when driving off road in rough country. 17 inch is the absolute maximum. I'm not going to go into the details why. You trust me on this. Okay, 16 is ideal. You want to go 17? Fine, go 17. 17 is still okay, still looks good. I want high profile tires. I want high profile tires. Land Rover has an opportunity here with a new Defender to do something unbelievably good. And they have the opportunity to completely screw it up and lose a lot of customers to Toyota because eventually the guys in their Land Rovers, they're going to wore out and they, they just, you know, I've had Land Rovers and they, they do take a lot of maintenance anywhere to keep going, but any old vehicle does. So then eventually it's a case of, I want to buy something new. I don't want to buy a new Defender because I can't make a hobby out of it. I can't fall in love with it. I can't make it mine. No SUV or soft rotor in existence can you do that with? Not really. But a pucker four-wheel drive, you can. So these pictures are taken and I've been going through them over the last week. Uh, this is the, these are the, the secret pictures of the new Defender. And I'm looking for clues. Is it an SUV? Well, not in the traditional sense. Now, I am, am making this assumption right now that this is actually the Land Rover Defender, the new one. 
So assuming that it is, I have to look at some of the clues. It has 18 inch wheels, but also the tires are not particularly low profile, which is a very good sign. I look at the clearance and I see some uh, indications that this could either have coil springs or air springs, but if it's got air springs, then that's a bad thing, particularly if there isn't a coil spring alternative. And if it's got coil springs, then that's not a lot of clearance. It's not terrible, but it's not particularly good. It's Pajero-ish clearance, which I can promise you is not enough. There is, of course, another thought here and that Land Rover are taking us for fools. If I now compare the new Defender with the LR4, there are some distinct and striking similarities. Firstly, the dimensions and look and feel of the vehicle are very similar. Secondly, look at the wheel arches. All they would have had to do was to fill in the gap above the wheel arches to make them blend in with the body. Very easy. Look at the door handles. They are the same. They look lower in the door only because in the new Defender they have raised the door height. The bonnet, they've just made a new bonnet, squared it off, and the clue is this clamp here. That's a very easy way of holding a bonnet closed if you don't want to do all of the machinery in the front, all the catching, to hold the bonnet closed. The roof. There is a distinct design cue in the LR4, not present in the Defender, but all they would have had to do was to block in this area here. And the clue? The sticky tape on the top of the windshield. Also, there's a crease at the back behind the C-pillar, and they filled out the front to give it a slanted look. There are too many similarities to ignore. I, I think they're taking us for fools. I think this is an LR4. Because if I look at it, it's, it's di and now at the size, height, width, the, all of these different dimensions of it. It's a Land Rover Discovery LR4 with stuff stuck on it. Because if Land Rover wanted to honestly keep this secret, they would not have put hashtag best 4x4 on the side. That's not what ma vehicle manufacturers do when they want to test a vehicle and keep it hush hush. They try and hide it by every possible means so people don't know what it is. That's as good as an enormous Land Rover badge on the side of it. I don't think that's the new Defender. But if it is, I'm reasonably optimistic.